At 0748 hours on August 22, 2025, the USS Princeton, America's $1.8 billion Aegis destroyer, was patrolling international waters in the South China Sea when her advanced SPY-1 radar detected a Chinese Type 052D warship violating maritime law. Within 67 seconds, the Chinese vessel accelerated from 18 to 30 knots on direct intercept course, triggering a confrontation that would showcase exactly why America's 246-year naval dominance remains unchallenged in the Pacific. China was about to learn exactly why picking a fight with the USA Navy is like poking a sleeping grizzly bear. Real stupid move. See, that Chinese captain had just gotten fresh orders from Beijing. Make the Americans blink, first. But you don't challenge the world's most powerful navy in open water and expect to win. That's just... I mean, come on. The Nimitz Strike Group was doing what they've done for decades. Keeping the world's busiest shipping lanes open so everyone gets their stuff on time. Those Chinese TVs at Best Buy? Our navy makes sure they arrive. All this happening 180 nautical miles from Chinese territory. Clear-cut international waters where $3.4 trillion in global trade flows every year. The strike group's mission couldn't have been more by the book. Predictable course, transparent intentions, the kind of professional conduct that separates actual navies from floating bullies with guns. That's America's approach. We don't hide what we're doing because we don't need to. By 0926, Princeton's radar operators had the Chinese ship locked down tight. Type 052D destroyer. Threat level, let's just say hi. Inside Princeton's Combat Information Center, the tactical officer wasn't even sweating. Not with 122 vertical launch cells at his fingertips, loaded with enough firepower to turn that Chinese ship into scattered debris. The Princeton's SPY radar painted such a crystal clear picture you could frame it. The Chinese ship would be in weapons range in exactly 17 minutes at current speed. Now here's the math that should have terrified them. Their YJ-18 missiles might be quick, but our SM-6s can reach out and touch someone at 240 kilometers. That's American reach you just can't match. At 0929, the captain asked what the Chinese ship was up to. Pretty obvious answer. They'd be in firing position in 14 minutes. The recommendation came fast, general quarters. But our captain, ice in his veins. Let's see how badly they want to embarrass themselves first. Pure American confidence on display. The South China Sea was packed with civilian traffic that day. 46 commercial vessels within 50 miles. Singapore container ship loaded with semiconductors. South Korean tanker worth $200 million. All depending on us to keep things civil. Beijing wants these waters as their private pool, but that would require actually beating the US Navy, which hasn't happened since, oh right, never. At 0930, Princeton Systems instantly shared threat data across the entire strike group. The Nimitz, all 100,000 tons of floating American diplomacy with 90 of the world's deadliest aircraft, adjusted her operations like clockwork. Destroyers Chung Hoon and Kidd shifted positions, creating a perfect defensive screen that would make any Chinese attack a one-way ticket to the seafloor. Things got spicy at 0935. Our E-2D Hawkeye circling at 25,000 feet spotted multiple aircraft launching from the Chinese carrier Shandong. J-15 fighters climbing hard and heading south. You should have seen how pathetic they looked on radar. Those J-15s were struggling just to gain altitude. Ski jump launches will do that to you. Limited fuel, limited weapons, limited chances against American air power. A minute later, sonar operators caught the final piece of China's sad little puzzle. A Type 039 diesel-electric submarine, tens of miles out. And get this, the thing was making noise like a freight train underwater. Any half-decent subcrew would have been absolutely mortified. Totally amateur hour. The Chinese weren't just being aggressive. They were running a multi-domain intimidation campaign with museum pieces. Surface ships designed in the 90s. Carrier aircraft that couldn't carry full weapons loads. And submarines so loud they might as well be blasting their location on loudspeakers. All bark, zero bite. This was textbook bullying that only works if your target is weak or scared. Unfortunately for Beijing, they just challenged the wrong Navy in the wrong ocean. The US Navy's been perfecting blue water dominance since 1914. These Chinese forces were about to get a free masterclass in why American naval power reigns supreme. By 0937, the Nimitz flight deck erupted into what looks like chaos to untrained eyes. But it's not chaos. 
it's a perfectly choreographed dance that only American carriers have truly mastered. F-A-18E, Super Hornets from VFA-14 Top Hatters, rocketing off catapults every 45 seconds. Steam billowing as American naval aviation did what it does best, Project Overwhelming Power. The first division of Super Hornets climbed through 15,000 feet. Their AN-APG-79 AESA radars, already painting the incoming J-15S at maximum range. The tech mismatch was almost embarrassing. Our radars track multiple targets simultaneously. Theirs, sweeping back and forth like a lighthouse, basically announcing, here I am, please shoot me down. The J-15s were struggling for altitude, a painful reminder of the Shandong's ski jump limitations. Without catapults, they launched with reduced fuel and weapons. They were burning fuel fast, trying to gain energy advantage. Meanwhile, our fighters launched with full combat loads and gas to spare. Basic physics creating a massive advantage before the first shot. But the real advantage? Completely invisible. Every American F-18 connected via Link-16, sharing sensor data in real time. When one sees something, they all see it. Chinese pilots? Relying on voice commands and individual sensors. It's like fighting a networked team while wearing a blindfold. The tech gap isn't years, it's decades of advancement. The EA-18G Growlers joined without firing a shot. These electronic warfare jets carry ALQ-99 jamming pods that mess with enemy systems from miles away. As they established their orbits, Chinese communications started falling apart. On their radar screens, total chaos. What looked like four f 18 suddenly became 12, then 20. Radar locks broke and reformed constantly. The J-15 pilots found themselves chasing ghosts while real threats moved unseen. This is electronic warfare and we wrote the book on it. The Chinese were playing checkers. We're playing 3D chess. The Americans executed a formation called The Wall, a defensive spread perfected through decades of training. High cab at 35,000 feet, medium at 25,000, low at 15,000 overlapping engagement zones with mutual support. Nowhere for the Chinese to go without entering someone's weapons envelope, a three-dimensional trap with no escape. The Chinese formation stayed bunched up. They had to maintain visual contact just to coordinate. Makes them predictable, vulnerable. Their J-15 might look impressive on propaganda posters, but in actual combat, they're flying antiques against 21st century warfare, not even close to a fair fight. At 0943, the RC-135V-W rivet joint provided crucial intel. This modified Boeing 707 had been circling for six hours, cataloging every Chinese electronic emission. The Mandarin linguists on board were having an absolute field day. The Mandarin linguists on board were having an absolute field day. Darkstar confirms Chinese pilots requesting permission for aggressive maneuvers. They're asking to buzz our ships. American pilots, trained to seize initiative, found this pretty amusing. By the time Beijing approved anything, the tactical situation would have changed three times over. That's the problem with micromanagement from a thousand miles away. Our pilots are trained to think. Theirs are trained to ask permission. Meanwhile, Princeton's defense systems tracked every threat with mechanical precision. Her Aegis radar and combat system made the Chinese destroyer look like a barn door. Big, obvious, impossible to miss. Fire control solutions updated continuously and soon they might actually need them. At 0947 hours, the Chinese destroyer crossed a serious line. Their Type 346A phased array radar locked onto the USS Nimitz with fire control quality tracking. In naval warfare, that's one breath away from launching missiles. It's the electromagnetic equivalent of pointing a loaded gun at someone's head, a clear provocation. Inside Princeton's CIC, the response was immediate but measured. American discipline, built through years of drills and exercises, held firm. The Chinese were betting on American restraint, gambling our professionalism against their aggression. Our sailors stayed cool while Chinese operators played with fire. That's the difference between our navies right there. Princeton's fire control radars remained in standby, but her 122 vertical launch cells contained enough firepower to send that destroyer to the bottom in seconds. SM-6 missiles with 130 nautical mile reach, SM-2S in surface mode, all ready to turn that ship into the area's newest artificial reef if things went south. Every firing solution continuously updated. The Chinese destroyer was at risk from multiple systems, multiple angles, 
with zero chance of survival if things went hot. Their fire control lock lasted exactly 30 seconds, long enough to claim they could have attacked. Not long enough to trigger American self-defense measures. Calculated provocation. It was choreographed aggression against the wrong opponent. Princeton's crew documented everything at timestamps, signal characteristics, bearing data, information that would be quite useful in a real shooting war. The Chinese were providing us a free intelligence collection opportunity. But despite the Chinese ship stopping its radar lock, things were far from over. In the air, a J-15 pilot decided to show off, breaking formation. He dove toward an F-18 with what fighter pilots call a thump, an aggressive close pass meant to intimidate. Wrong move against a Top Gun graduate. The American pilot, trained at the Navy's elite fighter weapon school, simply rolled inverted and pulled into the Chinese fighter's six o'clock position. For three seconds, he had a perfect firing solution. His helmet-mounted display showed the J-15's engines glowing hot in infrared. One squeeze would send an AIM 9X Sidewinder up that tailpipe. He didn't squeeze. Professional discipline held. The moment passed, but the Chinese still had one more card to play. Their submarine finally made its move. The Type 039 diesel electric boat had been creeping closer, using depth layers to mask its approach. At 0951, it made a critical error, raising its snorkel to recharge batteries. Tango sonar, subsurface contact bearing 159, range 15,000 yards. Contact is snorkeling. Classified as probable type 039, he's making noise like a freight train. The submarine captain either didn't know or didn't care that Princeton's ANSQQ-89 sonar suite had been tracking him for the past hour. They had his acoustic signature cataloged, his position fixed to within meters, complete situational awareness. If this went kinetic, he'd have maybe 60 seconds to contemplate his life choices before an ASROC anti-submarine torpedo found his hull. Not exactly great odds when you're facing the world's premier anti-submarine warfare navy. The tactical picture had become a textbook study in how not to conduct naval operations. Chinese forces had positioned themselves in a box. Carrier Northwest, Destroyer West, Submarine Southwest. If shooting started, none would survive the first five minutes, and the Americans were about to show them exactly how that would play out. At 14.30 hours, the USS Nimitz launched everything that could fly. 48 aircraft roared off her deck in the largest single carrier display of air power in years. Super Hornets loaded with live weapons, growlers with electronic warfare packages, E-2D Hawkeyes commanding the electronic high ground. The afternoon sky turned dark with American aircraft. The growlers went to work first. Their ALQ-99 pods at full power turned Chinese radar screens into abstract art. False contacts appeared by the hundreds. Real aircraft vanished into electronic noise. The Shandong's air defense picture looked like someone had thrown paint at the screens. Total confusion. Chinese controllers couldn't tell what was real anymore. Everything was a threat. Nothing was a threat. Complete disorientation. And that's before a single missile was fired. Electronic warfare is America's invisible hammer, and it was coming down hard. Then came the submarine a Virginia-class attack sub that had been shadowing the Chinese formation for eight days. Silent, invisible, patient. At 1547, she surfaced six nautical miles from the Shandong, close enough for Chinese lookouts to see her black hull with their naked eyes. The psychological impact was devastating. Eight days of undetected operations. Their entire anti-submarine screen, helicopters, sonoboys, hull-mounted sonar, had failed completely. If this had been war, their carrier would already be on the bottom. Game over before it started. The sub's commanding officer ordered an emergency surface purely for effect. The submarine burst from the water like a breaching whale, water cascading off her hull in the afternoon sun. Perfect photo op of American dominance. Visual proof of complete underwater superiority. After about 90 seconds, just enough time to be seen, photographed, and reported, she slid back beneath the waves. The message couldn't be clearer. We own the undersea domain. Always have. Always will. You're playing in our backyard. Back in the air, American fighters demonstrated ACM, air combat maneuvering, at the expense of increasingly desperate Chinese pilots. The J-15s, already low on fuel from their ski jump launches, couldn't match the Americans turn for turn. Basic Energy Management 101, and they were failing. Each engagement ended the same way. American fighters in firing position, Chinese fighters defensive and burning precious fuel. One by one, the Chinese fighters peeled off, heading back to the Shandong with near-empty tanks. Their combat endurance exhausted in fruitless attempts to match American capabilities. 
By 1623, the Shandong Carrier Strike Group began its withdrawal. Official Chinese communications claimed they'd completed scheduled exercises, but everyone knew the truth. They'd come to demonstrate Chinese naval power, to intimidate lawful navigation, to claim waters that didn't belong to them. Instead, they'd received a crystal clear lesson in why the South China Sea is America's sixth Great Lake. Bye for now.